Oh my gosh. Did you watch part one? Did you watch last week's episode? In it, Dustin Pizer, my boyfriend of 12 years, interrupted the show while I was recording and you can see the shock on my face. All I was thinking is, I cannot believe he's interrupting me. What is he doing? I'm going to have to re-record all of this. And then he got down on one knee and proposed. And I was so happy. He was vulnerable, which is what he says in the proposal. So if you haven't watched that episode, go back. It also... We were talking about vulnerability, something that has been coming up for me so much this year. And I have been learning so much about myself and how important it is to be vulnerable, to open up, to show emotions. And I've just had several situations that that's been coming up for me. I shared a couple on part one. I'm going to share a couple more in part two, and I have a challenge for you. So let's dive in. Are you ready to open up and talk about all things business? I'm Crystal Vilkaitis, a curious entrepreneur who loves talking about business, especially over a glass of wine. I started Crystal and Cork to share open and honest conversations about my journey and talk to other entrepreneurs about their experiences. We pull back the curtain and talk about the highs and the lows. Wine isn't required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. Okay, so I'm continuing part two with another cup of decaf coffee, but let's pretend it's champagne. Like we're celebrating the engagement. So cheers, friend. Now, last week, where I left off is I was telling you about the company meeting that I was on a few weeks ago, and I started crying on the company meeting. I was not expecting to start crying at all. And I just felt like really nervous. I was shaking. My palms were sweating. And when I finished, one of my employees spoke up and he just shared how much he appreciated me being open and how he was saying it's really hard for us to be open and especially leaders. And for you to do that, I just really respect that. And it it seems like I kind of touched him. And it was such a, a... like meaningful moment for him to share that to me and for him to be vulnerable and share how he felt um, in front of all of our employees, you know, and speak up and say that. And I was really blown away. And when we hung up that company meeting, I kind of just sat back, you know, in my chair and I was like, whoa, I just cried. I just like, I was not expecting that. And wow. That feedback that he gave me, like, really, I'm so grateful that I I dropped all my walls and that I was just open and honest. And um, after that night, I got another email from an employee who was saying how much he appreciated that I shared. And it reminded him of something that they do at his church. And it was just a really amazing, supportive email. Then the next morning, I got another email from another employee who was thanking me for being vulnerable and open and sharing that she goes through some of the same things. And it was just like, whoo, I I felt so much support. I felt love. I felt just a meaningful connection. And I said meaningful a lot in part one, and I'm probably going to say it a lot in this episode because that is what it's about. It is about creating meaningful connections in this lifetime. I don't know about you, but I want something that's meaningful. I want to truly support the people in my life. And that's people, my family, my friends, but also the people that we serve at Crystal Media. Anybody that I meet at networking events, like I really care about meaningful. I don't like the fluff. I just like the fake. I just don't have time for that. I'm somebody I just love cutting to the chase chase and just being open and honest and um and sharing. But that can be really hard. And that's where over the past five years, I've had a hard time opening up and sharing. I couldn't. I felt paralyzed. I felt fake. I felt like I was living this double life because I was so struggling with burnout and my identity and what am I doing that I didn't want to share anything because I don't even know what to share. I'm going to be a shit show. Like I am going to sound like a mess and I don't have any solution. Now, do I wish that maybe I opened up a little and and 
and was honest with my feelings. I do wish I w- would have been. What I wish I would have done is reached out, gotten professional help earlier with a therapist, navigated some of these feelings, started to heal, started to understand, and then share. Um, because now that I am starting to share, and I'll share another story with you, more people are telling me, yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. I struggle with the same thing. Just like that event in New York City that I talked about in part one. So many people came up. Me too. Me too. I struggle with that. It's so funny to me because it feels like... I don't know if you struggle with this, but I do. Um, You feel like you're so alone with your problems. Like nobody in my life knows how this feels. Nobody in my life is going through this. And when we have that moment of somebody who says, just drops the wall and says, fuck, I'm having a hard time or, you know, I'm struggling or I'm really holding myself back or I'm really create, I feel self doubt or I feel fear or I feel hesitation or I feel paralyzed or trapped or however they're feeling. They're just open and honest and they share. It just opens up the, the, It just drops everybody else's walls and it makes us feel like we're not alone because we can relate. But what often happens is on social, like we're showing it's the highlight reel. It's everybody where they're traveling, this amazing dish. We're catching up with friends. Look how great I look in this outfit. Like it's the highlight reel. And that's fun to see and that's fun to share. And I totally share the highlight reel. I probably do. I do that a lot more than the like, uh, you know, the more vulnerable stuff for sure. But you know what gets more comments is when I'm being vulnerable. For example, I was really struggling with um, putting myself out there and just like going for it. And um, a few months ago, I talked about this on Instagram. And then a few weeks ago, I also talked about it on Instagram. Those two posts generated more DMs, direct messages than anything else I've published this year outside of getting engaged, of course. Um, But because people reached out and said, I feel the same way. Thank you for being honest. You've got this girl. Like I'd support. Um, and even one of my friends on Instagram, David Lawrence, who was on Crystal Uncorked this year, called me and said, I just want to thank you for being vulnerable and being so honest. Not a lot of people do it. And that w- really meant a lot to me. And I was like, oh my God, this call means so much to me. Like, thank you for sharing that. I was really terrified of sharing it. And then there's that moment of like, should I delete this? I should probably delete this. And they're like, oh, I'll just go to bed. And then in the morning, like, I'm definitely going to delete it. And then you sit down and you have all these DMs of people supporting you, feeling the same. And you're like, oh, well, I can't delete this. It's actually helping people. I, I'm just time after time after time this year, I am being shown how much it can help others when you are vulnerable, when you are open, like on such a deeper level. And that's what I'm here for. I want to go to the next level. I want to go to the next level. Um, the other, the final story that I'll share is a couple of weeks ago, I was on this webinar. I wasn't speaking. I was just attending this webinar and there were 300 probably women It looked like all women that I could see in the screens. Like it was a meeting. We were all on camera. And then it was being streamed over to Fort Fort Collins. (laughs) Nope. It was not being streamed over to Fort Collins. It was being streamed over to Facebook. And um, and so there was probably another couple hundred people over there. So about 500 people watching this live stream. And it was a podcast or it was a webinar about podcasting. I I love podcasting. It's just what I want to do all the time. And I really want to take this show to the next level. So I'm learning and I'm investing my time and money on just growing myself as a podcaster. And so there's this woman, Kathy Heller, who has a podcast course. And um, so she was doing all these free trainings to then like invite people into her course if they want to go deeper. I joined the course, super excited. Um, but I was on this free training and it was just Q&A. It was so awesome. She's like, we're just going to answer questions. So I knew I had a question because I had one that morning when I was journaling. So I raised my hand right away. I hit the button in Zoom, raised my hand right away. And I was like the second person. So she takes the first question and then now I'm up. 
And if you watch this show, you will see that my camera, I have a, a higher um, grade camera, if you will. And my I have a nice mic and just how I have things set up, like the, the quality is pretty good. I always get comments on the quality of my video when I am in webinars and meetings. And, um, and so that was like really nice and loved it. I got a lot of love in the chat from people. And my question was, um, do you script episodes or do you just like wing it? And she gave me such a great answer. She was like, you know, I had Rachel Ray on the, on my pot, on my show. And Rachel Ray is talking about this story and she is banging on the table with her bracelets on and you can hear it. And she is fired up and it is moving me to tears. And Kathy said, I can't script that. That real moment, right? The vulnerable, open moments. You can't script that shit. So uh, she was kind of talking to me about it and just gave great coaching. And she's like, you've taken the time to an effort to like learn all, all your equipment and your gear and have this beautiful setup. You want to be seen. You want to go out there and do this. You know, you just have to trust yourself. And, and, and she said some other things that I kind of blacked out. And I said, <laughs> I said, I know, I mean, I definitely have struggled with a fear of what people think and I have been hiding. And she just like, boom, went on this massive rant and about like the fear and holding ourselves back and living our lives based on what other people think we should be doing and putting ourselves in a box and just like gave this beautiful rant. And I'll link to the episode because she actually aired my question on her podcast. Um, she has a podcast called Don't Keep Your Day Job. Highly recommend it. So... um in the ch so she's giving me this amazing coaching and just seriously making me feel like I can fucking do anything. I can do anything. I'm going for it. Like just go, right? Do it afraid. So um I I'm my question's done and I start looking in the chat. There's 300 women on the chat. Holy cow. Blowing up of women saying, "Me too. I have fear too." Oh my God, Crystal, same. I have wanted to start my podcast for three years and I haven't because I'm afraid of what people will think. Like the stories, the stories, the stories. Then you go over to the Facebook group and you have more women. Same thing. I the fear, the fear. Then I joined the program. They have a private Facebook group for the members and I'm in there and I like to read what everybody's saying and everybody's doing their introductions. And so many women, like majority of the posts, are I've wanted to do this for years, but I haven't because I'm afraid. Or they're like, I'm terrified to be in this course, but something told me to do it. There's so much fucking fear around putting ourselves out there and being seen. I fucking struggle with it so deeply. If I could have moved past this years ago, I would have been living a more authentic life more in alignment with myself, with my purpose, what my with my passion, and wouldn't have struggled so bad those five years, but I was just putting myself in this box. So I'm not alone. I'm hearing all these women feeling the same way. And what was fascinating to me again was, wow, I was open. I said, hey, I have fear and I've been hiding. And I gave my, through my vulnerability, I gave others permission to do the same. We need a little bit of encouragement. We need a little bit of, oh, they've been through it too, but they made it out alive. Oh, I'm not alone in this. This isn't unique to me. And what's so funny is I think we all, like majority of people struggle with this. This is not a unique thing to like some of us. Majority of people struggle with the fear of what people think. And the more that I've been talking about it and getting into it, the more I'm seeing like, man, this is a huge problem. People are really holding themselves back because of what other people think. I did it too. But through these moments, the New York City event, crying on stage and then crying to my team and then being honest in my Instagram stories on how hard I'm, I'm struggling and, and sharing on this webinar with Kathy about that I'm hiding in my fears and seeing the fucking response of mostly women, but some men opening their hearts too. 
And so I wanted to do an episode about vulnerability because you know, this is a open and honest, um, open and honest conversations about business over wine or decaf coffee. Um, but vulnerability is like, man, when you can be vulnerable and open and show emotions in your marketing, in your business with your team, it's next level. Again, it is so much more meaningful. They grow more trust with you. They respect you. Your, your customers, your team, your clients, your partners, it just is more meaningful. And I think that if we allow ourselves to be more who we are, more authentic and true to who we are, it's easier. It's just easier to be you, to be open, be honest. You're not trying to hide and act perfect and have everything look like it's great because that's exhausting. You're just open and you're honest and you share. And I'm not talking about being one of those people that is like, my life sucks and this went wrong and this person cut me off in traffic and this happened and this, I'm doomed. I have such bad luck. I'm not talking about like victim, you know, like doing these rants on Facebook pity party stuff. I'm talking about like your heart. That's more like head and ego. I'm talking about heart. What does your heart want? What are you pulled to do? What are you pulled to share? What if you drop the wall, these barriers, right? Let those walls come down and we're just truly you. Would you act different in a company meeting with your team? Would you show up differently on social media? Would you show up differently to your friends or family or coworkers? Is there a possibility that you could help other people? do the same. Through you dropping your walls, letting those come down, as hard and scary as that is, letting your walls come down, showing your true self, being open, being vulnerable, and letting and giving permission to those that you're speaking to do the same. I feel like we would have so much more love in the world if we did that. But we walk around with our walls up because there are people that are mean out there. There are people that behind the computer say mean things. That's a big thing that's held me back. And we might mess up and we might sound stupid because we're fucking human. Everybody does. But we just have to take the step forward anyways and do it afraid. So my challenge to you is to try to lower those walls. And is there a situation in your life where you feel like you could be a little bit more vulnerable? Step into your heart, share who you are and speak up, be seen, put yourself out there. Is that to one person? Is that to a partner, a spouse, a parent, sibling? Is it to your team? Is it to your social media following? Is it to your podcast audience? Like, what is it? I really, really want to encourage you to also be vulnerable, to open up, to show emotion, and be willing to put yourself out there. Because through my experience, and I know I'm not alone in this, people will support you. You will help touch their lives. You could help transform them by doing it. It's incredible. It's incredible what can happen. So I hope that you go out there. You're willing to take a risk on yourself. Be a little bit more open, honest, vulnerable. I'm sure you're going to make it out alive. Like I said in part one, I said in part one, have, is there, has there been a time where you were vulnerable? You cried on stage. You cried on the company call. You put yourself out there on a webinar. Like, is there a time where you were and you were fucking terrified and you're like, I can't believe I did that. I'm so embarrassed. Oh my God, I'm going to delete it. Whatever. Tell me, will you DM me? I'm Crystal Vilkaitis on Instagram. We'll link to it in the episodes, but tell me, or you could email me cheers at crystal media. um, Nope. Cheers at crystal uncorked.com. Please tell me and then go out there and just try to be a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more open and see what happens and let me know how it goes. And, um, and look what happened with Dustin Pizer being vulnerable and opening up and finally proposing 
I mean, I feel like the happiest woman in the world. And so now there is wedding planning, which is happening. It's a whole new world. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't even thought about my dress. Like all the people have all these questions now, right? Like when's the date? Where is it going to happen? What are your colors? Who's in the wedding party? All the questions. And I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea. I've wanted to get married for many years, but I haven't actually been planning the wedding or thinking about it. I've just been waiting for the ring and uh, the commitment. And so now it's time to plan. And I'm very excited. I'm so happy that he was vulnerable because I hope he's okay that I'm sharing this. I think he is. Um, A big reason why Dustin didn't propose, we've been together for 12 years, is um, he would have to put himself out there to me right? And um, ask a big question and make a big commitment. And there were fears around that with him of for him to be more open and him to show more emotion and um, go next level. And he did it. And I could tell that he's happy about it. And so am I. And I'm so glad that you all got to witness it too. So we will link to part one, but go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's a great episode. It's my favorite episode, hands down, by far. It will probably forever be my favorite episode. Um, And until uh, we speak again, until that was so weird to say, I'd never say until we speak again. Um, But I'm excited that uh, this show is moving and grooving. I just want to say this one last thing. Like, I took this little pause with Crystal and Cork and now I'm back and I'm like, just, I've committed to this show. I love it. I've told my team, I have told the universe. It's just like, so a commitment and then things start falling into place. Uh, I've had the most downloads I've ever had on an episode two weeks ago in the year and a half. I've had the show from being open and honest on Kathy's webinar. I got a lot of people go follow my show and subscribe to the show and follow me on Instagram. Um, and so, and then I like easily, I booked four guests in one day. It was like easy for that. And they're like, yes, I want to be on the show. It was so awesome. Um, so I'm very excited for some guests that are coming up and for what's happening with the show. But again, like I always say, I'm just incredibly grateful that you listen and that you're here and I will see you on the next see you. And what my whole point was, what I wanted to say is when you commit, the world provides, You just have to commit first to what it is you want. Get really clear on what you want and then commit and it will happen. Things start, everything happens. It starts getting into motion and starts working in your favor, but you have to commit. Okay, I will see you on the next see you. Bye friend. All right, let's keep this conversation going. Join me on Instagram. I'm at Crystal Uncorked. And I need to tell you, thank you so much for listening to this show. It truly means the world to me. If you're enjoying Crystal and Corked, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Okay, I'll see you on the next CU. Cheers, friend.